mixing your low end synth bass. That's going to be today's video. Are you ready for that? Let's go and do it. Let's do it. Hey, what's up, I'm Animal Kitchen, and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, don't hesitate to hit that uh, notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Stick around until the end of this video. I will tell you who the new patrons are, and I will tell you all about the Mixer project and exciting news that I have. I was teaching this week in Utrecht, which is in the dead center of the, my native country, Holland, the Netherlands. And I was doing a one hour, one and a half hour course online and offline for the good folks over at Sound Education Holland, S-E-N, Sound Education Nederland, which is Holland. And it was all about low-end content and the questions that I got really inspired me to go and do this video for you because it seems to always be a theme what is happening with the low end the low end is probably one of the most um, difficult frequency ranges to get right when you start out with producing but even if you are a seasoned vet you can still have problems trying to figure out how your low end should work and whether it is going to help you out yes or no so i thought to do a video on how are you going to do that in a live set environment when you've got bass heavy synthesizers i'm talking about a defan a minitar a subsequent 37 come on hell today I'm even going to try in my JP08 boutique small synthesizer in the loop and see if we can get some bass content out of there. Bass content, you have to think of this in a broader sense. I do think that you have to try and memorize or try to get into a frequency window kind of thing in your brain, meaning within the frequency spectrum, the bass frequencies only occupy a certain amount of the frequency spectrum. Yeah, the frequency spectrum ranging from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, which we say 20 kilohertz. It means that your bass is going to probably live around say 30, 40 hertz all the way up to, what is it, 400, 500, maybe it might be going up a little bit further, but that's predominantly where it is. So you've got a small window opportunity to make things work, which is not going to be a problem if you've only got one synthesizer, but today we're using four. How's that going to work then? Um, is that not going to be phasing um, introduced? There's a lot of problems that we're going to have to tackle, but we can tackle them by thinking of a few things simple. Now, it's going to be a little bit more of a technical video, so please do um, follow along. If not, rewind and check the stuff again. Um, without further ado, I'm going to get out to, over to the live set. I'm going to get these uh, bad boys to work. You ready? If you are going for your own bass sound, mixing your bass sound, um, that's cool. You know, you can debate like, okay, let's play bass. I've got bass here. So this is... This is the JP08, by the way, that I usually don't use for bass, but for today's um, video, let's see if we can um, do something where, yeah, yeah, we'll go into the lower regions of the thing. So there's actually four different synths that I can use to manipulate bass, right? As a matter of fact, I've got a DFM sitting right there, the mini tire sitting right here, and then you've got a subsequent sitting over here, uh, res respectively on their own channels. So this. Ooh. Clearly mini tire, right? So. Channel 7 on my uh, 08. Is the JP08 going through the uh, DD7 delay and then track 8. Going through the uh, black sky sitting over there. That's the subsequent 37. Okay, now let's play a beat and let's play a bass line. The thing is, it's not so much a problem if you got one of those synths, right? But the problem starts to occur if you're using multiple synths. Now, 
there's a few concepts that I'm going to run by you. Uh, one concept is the layering of bass sounds, then it works a little bit different from when you place different bass notes in certain areas. Let's try those two concepts. So first, let's see if we can, if we got like a bass drum going here. Nice. So we got a bass drum going, going from the 909, recorded on uh, MIDI channel one, channel two. Let's quick fast do some drums here. I'm gonna go for some old school drums today. Nice. Old school drums. Nice. Okay, what else do we need? This will suffice for now, right? Yeah, I think so. Got some toms maybe. But I need Okay, that's nice, that's going. I'll chew the tom later on. Now, okay. I, track five is going to be something else, so that's going to be the um, defam in a second. Let's go for tracks six. Mini track is eight tracks on the uh, RK08. Um, and this is going to be my mini tower. Okay, let's play long notes. Baseline. Okay. Now this all works and it's all nice and dandy, but let's see what happens if we're going to start adding that subsequent into the mix. Playing pretty much the same baseline, right? One, two, three. Oh. Two, three, and. Fun. Let's see if we can do one, two, three, and Okay, now, what is happening right here? Because now a lot of stuff is overpowering it. it, 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 it it's overpowering, right? So what I'm going to do is um, mute my hi-hat and the clap so we can focus on what we're hearing here. I'm going to lower the filter on the JP-08. That's nice if it's working as a layer, but if you are going to um, think on what do I want, how do I want to play it, listen to this sound. I like the sound, but the sound is already playing around with the tom, if you can hear. So that's already something that I'm going to solve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, li I'm going to look at a little bit of sound design. So, so I'm going to shorten my note here. Lower a little bit of 
bit of volume here. So in my mind, I'm going to start to make a priority list of which sounds need to play first. Now, problem one, the tom is a little bit on the long side, so I'm going to lower the decay. Wow, wow, wow. So I want the tom to be finished when the next bass drum is hitting, right? So it needs to pop. Because in the end of the day, the only thing that I need this for is for transients. For its articulation, if you don't know what the transients are. So it's going to breathe a little bit more. So now that I've got this, the jigsaw puzzle should be that the attacks or the initial starting points of the, of the extra sounds that we're going to add, they need to be audible, right? So the next stop is going to be that mini tar bass. Let's see if we can make it a little bit more snappy even. So the trick is... The trick is to look at different envelopes. So there's an LFO that you can stick on the filter. Voltage control, filter, LFO, amount. Open it up a little bit so the filter will not be as steady. It will start to wow, 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 introduce a little bit of an envelope there. Also look at the filter. And set it in a place where you can distinctively hear those two sounds together. You can clearly hear the tom and the bass. Now we're building it up there and we're building it up like a pyramid so everything is that's loud and big needs to just come first and then we're slowly going to place stuff on top of it but whatever we place on top that layer should not be pressing down or, or you know pushing the other layer away now. I can clearly hear this bass. I think I'm gonna leave it here for now. I played inconsistent um, note lengths it's all good, but that's what happens right now. Now, let's see if we can play our next sound off. Our next sound should be... Thing that I've recorded it. Let's play this for the. I want to save that for last. Let's play the. I'm going to play this. This bad boy also. I'm going to lower the reverb that I've got sitting here because it's going straight into the black sky. I'm going to lower that reverb a little bit. As a matter of fact, I'm going to kill it completely for now. Now, what's happening right now? My minotaur seems to be gone, so we can, we can lower the filter. And place this on top of the minotaur. Now, you hear that it's a long, it's a higher pitch. I've played this uh, one octave up from where the minotaur is. And it's nice as long as I keep my filter down, say around 11 o'clock or it, on the dial it says 320 hertz. From the minute I'm going to start opening up the filter, it's going to drown out the minitar. So what I'm going to do here is, is make sure that the note lengths are also around the same length, right?
Now let's start to work together. And I'm going to shape the sound a little bit. There's sub there, and there's also noise that I'm going to introduce. So now that this starts to become a little bit more growly, all of a sudden you can hear the sound a little bit more distinctively. Without the sound. Now I'm going to introduce a little bit more envelope generation on the mini tar and then Nice. Now that this sound is working together with the mini tower, I mean, you can clearly hear that there's two bass lines here. I'm going to introduce a little bit of reverb to set the subsequent apart from the mini tower. This is too much. And it's on shimmer. Let's put it on just. Hold on. Oh, nice. Now, I deliberately turned my clap and my hi-hat off because I literally wanted to just like listen to um, the sounds. Now, a lot of people debate like, why are you not turning off the kick as well and the tom? Well, low end in my um, philosophy also has got to do with the groove and the placement of the notes. So I love to just stick it on the bass drum and listen to how that works together with the bass drum and the tom. So this is my, yeah. My kind of go-to way of thinking, okay, this works, right? Now let's see if we can add another bass line into the mix, which is going to be the... Recorded. What is happening is that I'm actually trying to create a frequency window here. So if you look at the frequency graph and you'll go from 20 hertz up to 20k, obviously bass will only um, occupy a certain amount of that set space, but still within that range I can still pinpoint where I need to stick certain things. Now. I also say a lot that I don't EQ and compress stuff and I don't because I leave compression up to the way I level my sounds as speakers in the club will compress the sound or at least will uh, invoke a hierarchy to which sounds will be audible more than other sounds. That's a little bit of the trick that I'm doing with the live set. So if you ever wondered how this thing sounds in a club and how you would work it, why you don't need side chains and why you wouldn't need uh, EQs and, and, and a lot of um, yeah, um, processing chains that a lot of people use. This is the reason why. I am leveling stuff so, and I'm trying to build it from the ground up. So can we still hear everything? Probably not. Now, as I don't really want to go in and fiddle on uh, the JP08, the only thing that I need from it is something going through a filter. Yep. I'm liking it. Okay, so now I've got three sounds that happen uh, in terms of low-end content. Mind you though, to get more stuff in it starts to become slightly more complicated. So what is happening right now is that I'm actually um, fiddling about with the resonance on the Acid Box 3 by Erica Sins. This filter is stereo, thank you very much. It is a cool sounding filter, it makes stuff sound very analog. Um, but if I lower the resonance, you'll hear that the JP08 now starts to fight, especially with the Minotaur. If this is gone. And there's delay on it. Yes, obviously I've got delay here which I can lower a little bit.
Yep. I've got a split sound by the way, which is why you'll hear one sound a little bit louder than another sound. Um, there's split sounds or dual sounds here. And on the other side are just like the presets, but I've tried something different today. Um, I was thinking, why am I hearing one ear louder than the other one? Um, yeah, so um, opening up the delay a little bit more. But from the minute I'm going to start to open the filter up, it just disappears a little bit. So to, for it to have a little bit of character, JP08, I will considerably open up the resonance. And now all of a sudden I can dial in that, that, that vibe with the overtones a little bit more. So, now it's just stationary, steady. And here it comes. And the sweet spot seems to lie between 12 and 1 o'clock almost. So, let's do a little bit of mind mapping here, right? Open this up as well. Three sounds that make up the bass. Let's turn them off all by themselves. Now, listen carefully. My tom is going to go as well. Just a kick. Let's focus on one bass line. Now I'm going to take off the kick for you to really memorize what's going on. First, let's start with the mini tar. Focus. JP08. Concentrate and focus on what you're hearing. And there you go, subsequent. Now, why do I like to just like work it this way? All those sounds by themselves, the way I have shaped them now, are kick-ass bass sounds, basically. Um, which I probably won't get to if I don't layer them into uh, something that would work together. So now I have created from the bottom up with a kick something that could really work, right? This is the lower one, and of course they're going to overlap, and of course it's going to introduce a little bit of phasing, phase problems, but because of the nature of the sound with its overtones and its analog nature, you will have to understand that the overtones on an analog sound are a little bit more predominantly um, there, which means it's why you can play those two modes together and you can still hear them because your mind can latch onto different things. With this JP08 in the middle, which is giving me a little bit of ACB vibes, but still, um, it, it can hold its own against those uh, bad boys, if the bad boys are playing. Uh, we're going to play our Tom. So now we've got this thing solved. Um, there's still one uh, synthesizer that's not playing, and that I want to have play, which is not going to play the same thing, because this is just going to get triggered, which is the D fan. I need to go to this channel here. Lower this. Lower the DD500. to record something.
Okay. Now this is a completely different kettle of fish right here. I'm going to make it into a dual tone sound. Baseline. with the DFAM is that it's got its own sort of like vibe so what I'm going to do is introduce a little bit of noise here as well The trick is to only hear certain notes, so this thing is not playing along with the rest because I've just got this free running, triggering it from the rim shot coming from here, so that's why I can play it here. It's only playing eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's what I've done. So this is going to be the main bass line. So turning off my drums. And the trick is to steer them away from each other. So I'm going to introduce resonance here. And the resonance knob on the DFAM is making all the difference. Listen to what happens if I'm turning it down. It's all of a sudden embedding itself into the minitar, which is cool to be able to layer it. Picture a picture on TV. And the main character is standing in front of the TV and the person uh, he or she is talking to is standing behind. You won't be able to make out what's happening in this scene. So it makes for a very uh, unclear uh, picture if you're watching the movie. It's going to make you unrested because you don't know what's going on. So the same here. What you don't want to have happen is that both of them are going to start fighting um, and not making sure that the attention is working, right? So what we're going to do right now is making sure that we're going to have a clear conversation. So, and the conversation starts with the resonance because if I'm leaving these things, I'm just going to leave it stationary. Um, this is a, a video that can run like for a long time because uh, I'm only focusing on leaving my filter stationary once I've got sounds that need to work together. It'll be different if you're going to start playing live, you start to fiddle about with the sounds, which is cool, but it's going to be very hard to get your bearings uh, back sometimes. So I want to hear the DFAM and the Minitar together. So what I'm going to do right now is introduce a little bit of resonance 
on the DFAM, of which I'm only playing one oscillator. Um, and from the minute I add resonance, I'm going to lose low end, but um, get the sound a little bit more into your, uh, into your face. If I open the filter, you hear this. Fans it forward. And have it play. Yep, that's what we need. It, it skipped one and then it didn't play what it needed to play. So, lowering the filter, putting it on 200 hertz, uh, give or take. And now it's gone. It's into the minotaur. Entering um, resonance into the mix. Okay, get up the sh shortening the notes. Nice. And now you can play around with the resonance here or with the cutoff filter and have it do a little bit more interesting stuff, right? So now we've introduced the DFAM. We're going to play the JPO8. You can still hear the defam playing and reduce the, the subsequent you can still hear everything so now we got four bad boys playing and you can all hear it because they're all in their own uh, respective frequency ranges and that's how you would look at the bass and the low end right now let's enter some drums in here and see what's happening philip Puccia and Florch's Finest, our new patrons for this week. Thanks guys for hopping on board and also glad to see you made it into the Discord. The Discord is uh, the connection that is bridged coming from Patreon where a lot of stuff is happening. That's why the community congregates, that where we, that's where we talk shop, that's where we are actually discussing all the stuff that's happening on the videos. It's cool and the community is vastly growing. I'm really happy for that place my little niche uh, on the web is it's absolutely awesome to see so many like-minded synth people uh, get there so what do you think of today's video what do you think of today's topic um this is how i do it this is how i'm thinking of this bass kind of vibe i know bass videos do well on the channel a lot of people love bass i mean i'm a bass junkie in the first place you know what i mean i really love it um and it took me a while to get my head around how to work these different things now um i can easily make a track with only bass frequency because in the end of the day it's the most pumping sound in the club and a lot of people seem to really enjoy that vibe when that is happening right um one thing i didn't touch upon today is you can even go paraphonically with the subsequent 37 meaning playing the two oscillators separately from each other and that's also a powerful thing so if you ever listen to the tracks by ento um yeah you'll know exactly what's happening one oscillator playing the bass and then the other oscillator playing the top line and then oh going through the filter is absolutely amazing so that's also a trick to just like get a little bit more melody melodic content on your tracks now um yeah on the mixer front i have introduced ferry uh, my designer into the discord so uh, we are building this mixer from scratch yes definitely we are uh, and we're ordering prints and we're assembling stuff and we're testing out sound so it's a really cool process that has been going on for a long time we do feel that we can tell you that by april we should have a prototype in our hands that's what we're aiming for april yeah maybe earlier hmm but April is a safe bet to see if we can get the stuff going. I think we've ordered the last parts now this week, which means that it's going to be assembling, testing. But there's a lot of people that have ideas on it, and that's also what happens on Patreon. So get into Patreon, and through Patreon, get into Discord if you'd like um, to um, yeah, ask a lot of stuff. We're now in the process of trying to add a multi-clock idea to the mixer. That's what's going to set this mixer apart. It's going to be a live mixer meaning made for people that want to do dollar stuff also if you want to play vinyl now we are toying with the idea we've actually designed two different channel strips so 
One is a uh, two uh, band dual concentric mixer, which you pretty much need if you want to uh, shape up your MPC next to your Octatrack, next to your Moog, or next to whatever. So you can just like not surgically EQ stuff, but just like blend it in, right? Because if you need to surgically EQ your Octatrack to your MPC, you probably go have to go back and figure out why the sound is shitty anyway. So that's that. And then, then there's a three band um, EQ um, on channels that actually have phono input. So if you want to use it with vinyl and it's going to sound awesome because there's transformers in there, it's pretty much going to sound like a beefed up Neve desk, which is what I do think is what you need. You need a mixer to do that stuff for you. Not a lot of people know about mixing and mastering, but they know about playing though, but you know, people underestimate the fact that if you got more than four different synthesizers or groove boxes or sequence or whatever together, you're going to have to understand something about mixing or Think of the mixer that I'm building because it's going to do a lot of the saturation and the smoothness and the jelliness and all that kind of yummy stuff. It's going to do that for you. Now, more news on the Discord. You can find it through patreon.com slash analog kitchen and then you'll find your way into Discord. You won't be breaking the bank. It's but cool. It's a cool, it, it, it's be cool. But that's not even English. Uh, it's going to be a cool vibe. So, and then we welcome you in there with open arms. So it's a respectful place with like-minded folks. Okay. Uh, <coughs> commercial off. Okay. Now, if you made it this far into the video, you, sir or ma'am, are an absolute superstar. Thank you for watching. I'm Analog Kitchen. I uh, hope you enjoy the content. Um, there's music on my Bandcamp as well. That's what tunes that I do. There's a DFAM jam track that I did. I just recorded a DFAM and started fiddling around with it. And uh, it turned out well. So that's a track that's on my um, uh, Bandcamp page alongside other things. There's a Radiohead remix that I did and just a lot of stuff that's there. So if you want to... Um, actually hear what it sounds like if i'm not talking over the music that's your direction um check out all the socials uh i'm over i'm everywhere so yeah i guess that's that thank you for watching and i'll catch you next time peace